What does this remind you of? Is it the stretches of canals through Amsterdam? Is it the hundreds of scenic windmills across Holland? Or is it... Max Verstappen wins! The Monaco wins! Grand the Miami Grand Prix! Verstappen wins! The Australian... Max Verstappen sets the fastest lap and wins! The Austrian Grand Prix! Verstappen wins the Hungarian Grand Prix! Max Verstappen takes the checkered flag, wins the Belgian Grand It's safe to say this might as well be the new theme song for Formula 1. Max Verstappen is absolutely dominating Formula 1 right now and there is not a single person on the grid that is even coming close to pushing him for the title. How early can Max Verstappen win the 2023 Formula 1 Championship? The earliest win of a Formula 1 Championship was all the way back in 2002. Michael Schumacher clinched it by winning the French Grand Prix just 11 races into the 17 race season. It may look like Formula 1 used to be a lot more dominant back then, and yes it was, but Formula 1 does use a different point system now to what it did back in 2002. Points back then were much more favoured towards the winner of the race. And this is one of the reasons why Schumacher won so early on in the season. Yes, he did win almost every race, but this definitely helped him win sooner. A different point system is shown where first place used to equal 10 points, second was 6, third 4 points and so on. Now in the current system, we have 25 points for first place, 18 points for second place, 15 for third and so on, with one point being awarded to the fastest lap, assuming they finish in the top 10. This was added in 2019. In 2002, the difference between first and second was a 50% difference in points. In 2023, using the current point system, the difference between first and second place is only a 33% difference, meaning this current point system doesn't favour the winner of the Grand Prix as much as it used to. We've had 12 races so far and we have 10 to go. We are still only 55% of the way through the season, so Max Verstappen can break that record by Michael Schumacher winning it at 65% of the way through the season. But what race is Max Verstappen gonna win the 2023 Formula One Championship? I have put together a spreadsheet of all the driver's points to calculate the best case scenario for Max Verstappen. For each race from now to the end of the season, we are gonna assume at every feature race, Max Verstappen will get first place and pick up the fastest lap point meaning he gets 26 points at every race but we still do have three additional sprint races for the rest of this season so as well as the 26 points Max Verstappen will get an additional eight points for coming first place in those three sprint races this is a theoretical best case for Max Verstappen but what about the rest of the grid now Max Verstappen's closest rival in Sergio Perez in P2 best case for Max Verstappen is Perez or whoever is challenging him for the second place will get zero points between now and the end of the season Max Verstappen will just keep extending that gap now this is obviously extremely unlikely but for now we are just going to calculate the theoretical best case scenario for Max Verstappen later in this video I'm going to calculate a more realistic expectation of when we can expect Max Verstappen to win the championship so as of recording this video we have just had the Belgium Grand Prix Max Verstappen sits on 314 and Perez, his nearest rival in P2, sits at 189 points, a 125 point difference between the two drivers. The next race on the Formula 1 calendar is Zandvoort. If Max Verstappen picks up all 26 points possible here, he will sit on 340 points, increasing the gap to Perez to 351. Now the remaining maximum available points from after Zandvoort to the end of the season will be 258. Now as the maximum available points is greater than the point difference between him and second place, this means that the championship is still open for P2. Next we move on to Italy and we have Monza. Stappen P1 and fastest lap again bumps him up to 366 points, obviously Perez remaining on the same. This means the gap is 177 with the maximum remaining points being 232 so Max Verstappen cannot win at Monza. After Monza we have Singapore. Now Max Verstappen taking the win again means he gets 392 points, Perez remains on the same and the points difference is 203. Now in this case the maximum remaining points is 206 so just three point difference but this does mean that Max Verstappen cannot win 
the Formula 1 2023 championship in Singapore. So then we move on to Japan where Max Verstappen would sit on 418 points if he took the win and fastest lap. This would put him at a difference between him and Perez of 229 points with only 180 points being the maximum that can be won for the rest of the season, that means that Max Verstappen would clench the 2023 championship in Suzuka. Now, if you remember back to last year, it was a pretty dominant year for Max Verstappen, but we did also have Charles Leclerc winning a few races at the start of the season. Max Verstappen did win the championship in Suzuka that year, but it wasn't the same round. In 2022, Max Verstappen won the Japanese Grand Prix, securing him the title at the 18th race of the season. This year, the calendar has been moved around a little bit. Japan is the 16th race of the season. So although it will be won potentially on the same race weekend, it is much sooner on the calendar. So this is the theoretical best case scenario for Max Verstappen. But as I mentioned earlier, even with Max Verstappen's dominance, the chances of this happening are extremely low. Sergio Perez, Alonso, Lewis Hamilton are gonna score a decent amount of points. So this may drag out a little bit longer into the season. So let's calculate when Max Verstappen is realistically going to win the championship. So to do this, I think it is best to take the average points per race weekend up to now and extend these on to the rest of the season. Now this works quite nicely at the mid-season break because we've had three sprint races and we have three sprint races remaining. That means that they account for each other, so they're not going to weight the averages too much. Max Verstappen has scored 314 points in the first 12 races this season. So points per race on average, Max Verstappen is scoring 26, rounded to the nearest whole number. Perez, on the other hand, has scored 189 in the opening 12 rounds. This accounts for, on average, 16 points per race. So as Sergio Perez in P2 is scoring nearly as many points as second place makes you, this means things are going to go on for just a little bit longer, but maybe not as long as you would expect. So obviously Max Verstappen wouldn't win the race in Japan. So after that, we have the race weekend in Qatar. So in Qatar, we have a sprint weekend, but this is accounted for in the averages. So the average point of 26, which is a bit of a coincidence to be honest, being the fastest lap and first placed same amount of points. We can add those 26 points onto his total from Japan, bringing that up to 444 points. Add in Sergio Perez's average points from Belgium Grand Prix all the way up to Qatar, puts him on 269 points. So after the Qatar Grand Prix, the difference in points between Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez is 195. Now the remaining races after this is the Cota Sprint Race, the Cota Feature Race, Mexico, Brazil Sprint, Brazil Feature Race, Las Vegas and Abu Dhabi. Now the remaining maximum available points for all of these races is 146. Now this is less than the points difference between Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez, meaning that after the Qatar Grand Prix, including the feature and sprint race, Max Verstappen would be crowned Formula 1 champion. Now I was slightly surprised by this, I thought it would go on for a little bit longer, but because Max Verstappen is building that points difference every race by about 10 points, now this just means it's not going to take him that much longer to build up that points difference and Perez is just going to run out of opportunity to get points. Now obviously this is just using averages, Perez might go on to win a few races, Alonso, Lando Norris might win a few races, but we can't predict that obviously, so this is just having a look at where he's likely to win it. So if I was putting money on this, I think I would say Max Verstappen is likely to win the Formula 1 championship somewhere between Suzuka and Qatar. We could hope for a last minute miracle and an upset and have someone else win the championship. I mean, theoretically, it is still possible that Daniel Ricciardo, Logan Sargent could still win the championship if they bring some sort of mega upgrade after the summer break. Probably unlikely. But I don't expect anything other than Max Verstappen running away with his third world championship. If you're interested in how the current Formula 1 season would look if Red Bull hadn't scored a single point, then feel free to watch this video. Thanks for watching, I will see you in the next one. Cheers.